Greetings to all you fans of RPGs and Dungeons and Dragons. In this video, I will be reviewing and discussing the Dungeons and Dragons module A3 Assault on the Airy of the Slave Lords, which was written by Alan Hammack and published by TSR in May of 1981. This module was intended for a group of player characters between the levels of 4 to 7. Also, this module was written for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons 1st Edition rules. The Dungeon Master will need to do some work to convert it to 5th Edition rules. This adventure takes place in the fantasy world of Greyhawk within the Orcish Kingdom of Pomage, outside the nefarious city of Highport, where the previous module adventures took place. For this module, the adventure takes place in Trakhansgrab Hills and Mountains, which is located south of Highport City. Some modifications are needed by the Dungeon Master if they plan on running this module in the Forgotten Realms. I will suggest three possible locations, all of which lie on the eastern side of the Sea of Fallen Stars. Hills nearby the following suggested locations can be used. Chacenta, Threshkel, or Thay. As the module's plot hook, organized bands of pirates and slavers have been raiding the coastal towns on the Sea of Girnat and taking captives into slavery. The player characters were hired by the lords of these coastal towns to eradicate the slavers. In Dungeon Module A1, Slave Pits of the Undercity, a band of fearless adventurers which were the player characters if they played through the A1 module, discovered the slavers, which were mostly orcs, to be operating out of a ruined temple within Highport City. In Dungeon Module A2, Secret of the Slaver Stockade, the Slave Lords were also operating in an old fort in Drakhansgrab Hills. The band of adventurers found the fort and disrupted the slavers' operations there. This module continues the player character's search for the rest of the slavers deep under the Drakhansgrab hills and mountains. The module states, after many fruitless attempts at following parties of slavers and slaves, the player characters discovered that the slavers and slaves disappeared beneath one great peak in the Drakhan's Grab Mountains. There, the party discovers four cave entrances, and one of these must lead to the Airy of the Slave Lords. As River Song from the Doctor Who series would say, Spoilers! I will now be discussing the module itself, and this video will contain spoilers. Unless you are a dungeon master, who will be running this module for their players, or are a player who already played through this module and are watching this video for nostalgia purposes, I would suggest not to watch the rest of the video. The module and the adventure is divided into three parts. The first part is the cave area. The second part is the city of Sunderham. 
and the third part is the sewers and catacombs. Here is a cutaway view of the environs the module takes place in. The cave environs takes place towards the left-hand side of the cutaway view. The Slave Lord's capital city, Sunderham, lies on a hidden island on a lake filling a supposedly extinct volcanic crater. Sunderham, the catacombs and sewer environs, are on the right-hand side of the cutaway view. The objective of the player characters is to penetrate Sunderham and find a way into the catacombs and sewers to confront the slave lords themselves. In order to be suspenseful and adventurous, the module oftentimes defies logic and throws it out the window. The bad guys, i.e. the slave lords, hide underground in the catacombs of their own city. This is one example of the module not making logical sense. So the dungeon master may want to make a few changes. To get to Sunderham, the player characters first need to go through the cave environs. The four cave entrances are at the lower left-hand corner of the map. The only way to proceed is for the player characters to find, whether accidental or intentional, the salt slide, and then slide through the natural chute. Here we have another example of the module being illogical. Using this salt slide on a daily basis would be dangerous and hazardous for the slave lords, their slaves, and for the inhabitants of Sunderham. Anyway, at the bottom of the salt slide are ten nulls waiting in the chamber to ambush the player character's party. After the salt slide chamber, the party will need to pass through an octagonal shaped cavern filled with piercers, with a false door located on the opposite end. One of the villains of the module is Wimpel Fromp. Wimpel Fromp is described as a lackluster 8th level illusionist and as a wizened old man in tattered clothing. He has been hired by the slave lords to guard an entrance to their city. Within a huge marble throne room, Wimpel Frump sits upon a throne which has special magical enchantments to maintain illusions. Wimpel will appear as a tall, emaciated, gnoll-like figure bearing a seven-foot-long flail with three massive heads. Basically, this illusion is to make Wimpel look like Yi Nogu, the demon lord of gnolls. To the right of Wimpel are illusions of six tall gnolls. To the left of Wimpel are illusions of six leering ghouls. This slide shows fan art by Viter Diaz of the Throne Room Encounter, found in the A0 to A4 modules compilation book titled Against the Slave Lords. Actually, there are really five gnolls that are hiding among the pillars within the throne room. The tactics of these gnolls are to pepper the player character's party 
with arrows and to protect Wempo, the illusionist. Once past the throne room encounter, the party will discover a tunnel that goes deep underground before heading up and finally to the Isle of the Slave Lords. Just as a reminder, the Isle lies in the middle of a large hidden volcanic crater. The crater is filled with water, hence forming a lake around the Isle. The Isle is also called the Airy. On the Airy is a slave lord's town and abode called Sunderham. Sunderham proper is surrounded by impregnable walls that are 30 feet high, which is a little over 9 meters, and towers that are 50 feet in height, which is a little over 15 meters. The area between the town and the docks are mostly slum dwellings. There are also farmlands being worked by slaves. This module details Sunderham, but not the rest of the island. For details on the rest of this mysterious isle, the dungeon master will need to refer to the A4 module in the dungeons of the slave lords. Sunderham offers the player characters an opportunity to test their role-playing skills rather than primarily focusing on combat or stealth. This module provides a number of non-player characters in the town with whom the player characters can interact and exchange information with. But not too many, so the Dungeon Master will need to come up with makeup, NPCs, non-player characters uh, on his own to fill in the city and its ha inhabitants. To complete this part of the module, the party must find one of two secret entrances to the catacombs beneath the town, where the final part of the adventure plays out. The tournament portion of the module assumes the player characters defeated a group of slavers and stole their clothes and passes and then snuck in. In the non-tournament play, I guess the dungeon master needs to provide an opportunity for such an occurrence, such as before the player characters enter one of the four cave entrances back at the beginning of the module. As the player characters pass through the main gate, a limpering beggar hobbles up and whispers that he is an agent of those who hired the player characters and that they should seek out the Ivory Paladin. This is a cryptic phrase referring to an inn called the Sign of the White Knight. However, the player characters will only learn of two things. One, the location of the library, which the party can find maps and charts. And two, the location of a brothel called Sign of the Red Rose. There is a secret passage to the catacombs at the Red Rose brothel. To me, there should be more activity and intrigue at the White Knight Inn. As a dungeon master, I would make this inn a place where the player characters can hire hirelings, gather information about the slave lords, gather information about various town inhabitants and visitors, gather information about the town itself, including locations of important buildings, and their keepers and employees. Like most city-states, Sunderham 
mints its own money and insists that it be used within the city. Anyone attempting to purchase items with non-Sunderham money will be directed to the money changer. The town charges a 10% tax on exchanged money, and the money changer adds a tidy 5% profit for himself. So the player characters will be exchanging their coins at 85% of their face value in order to use in the town. Like any other town, Sunderham has several taverns, such as the Fighting Man's Haven, the Waltzing Werebear, the Grimacing Gargoyle, Den House Pub and Grub, the Magic Missile, and the Clever Codgel. In Sunderham's center is the Slave Auction Arena. Other places of note include the Bouncing Bugbear Gambling Hall, a flop house, an armor shop, an Assassin's Guild, Temple of the Earth Dragon, the Military Quarter with barracks, officer quarters, stables, armory, and slave pens. Below the military quarter is the official quarter, which also includes the treasury. Next, I will be mentioning and discussing about the wealthy quarter. At the wealthy quarter, the following can be found. A wizard's guild, an abandoned residence where another entrance to the catacombs and sewers can be found, and the slave lord's stronghold in its center of the quarter. Funny thing is, the slave lords will be waiting for the party in the catacombs level instead of within their own stronghold. Illogical, as Spock would say. The catacombs level is the third and last section of the module. Each room encountered in this level is filled with dangerous creatures, some of which I will mention in the next few slides. Both secret passages to the catacombs level will lead to an octagonal shaped room with a flesh golem that has polished iron plates attached to its skin. Like the D&D a2 module, Secret of the Slaver Stockade, this module also has a Minotaur encounter. Right before the final showdown area is a huge swampy cavern with a shambling mound in the lake's blackish waters. Within the catacombs level, five slave lords lie in wait of the player character's party. All these slave lords are human. Unfortunately, the module hardly gives any of these slave lords any personality or character. One can argue, well, they are slavers. What more do you need to know? However, I find two-dimensional villains boring, and would recommend the Dungeon Master to provide more details on them. Ajax 2 is a 9th level magic user. He has a staff of power with only 3 charges remaining, but will not use the final charge. He also has a crystal ball and a ring of spell storm. The Crystal Ball has enabled the Slave Lords 
to keep track of the party. Nerilus is an 11th level assassin. He is described as being silent and cunning. Beetla is a 10th level fighter. He is the current leader of the Slave Lords. His daring raids and naval strength have helped the Slave Lords dominate the region. Brother Milerjwa is a 9th level monk. He is described as a high ranking monk from the Scarlet Brotherhood. Mordramo is an 11th level cleric. He is the chief priest of the Temple of the Earth Dragon. The final showdown of this module occurs in the Council Chamber of the Slave Lords. In the tournament version, the player characters are automatically put to sleep by poison gas. The other option for the Dungeon Master is to let the fight play out. In this case, the player characters are up against five intelligent, well-coordinated enemies. Also, the villains are two to four experience levels above the player characters. Needless to say, this will be a tough battle one that the player characters will most likely lose. But that is what makes the final confrontation so memorable. The player characters are meant to lose, and that propels the story forward. In the end, the player characters are captured and are resurrected if need be, as the setup for the next module a4 in the Dungeons of the Slave Lords. There is one new monster in this module called the Stroper, which is a rocky variant of a normal Roper. So you basically can call it a Stone Roper. Anyway, it has six tentacles and if any successfully hits a target, the stone roper will inject a poison into the victim with no saving throw. The victim will then appear to be petrified for one round, then the victim is dominated and will aid the stone roper in combat and fight fellow player characters. In my opinion, this ability is too cruel, and as a dungeon master, I would allow a saving throw for the victim. The treasure in this module is pretty good. However, discussing the treasures in this module is meaningless. At the end of the module's adventure, the player characters are supposed to be captured with their possessions taken away and then thrown into the dungeons of the Slave Lords, which is the next and last module in the A series. You just have to try harder than you fight. You might be lost like sunshine in the, the drawings, maps, and art of the module were done by Jeff D, David S. LaForce, Errol Otas, Jim Rosloff, Bill Willingham. With the exception of four drawings, the rest of the module's art have already been displayed within this review. I will now present the rest. Would it be easier for me to be heard and to be seen? What am I?
the A3 module is available for purchase on the drive through RPG website. The A3 module is also part of the Against the Slave Lords compilation, which is also available for purchase on the drive through RPG website. This compilation includes additional fan art, some of which were included in this review. Thank you for watching. Hope this video has been informative and entertaining. I love many types of role-playing games, especially Dungeons and Dragons. Inclusive in my wayward love is computer role-playing games, such as The Witcher series, Divinity Original Sin 1 and 2, the first two Dragon Age games, Baldur's Gate, and others. In the foreseeable future, for this channel, I plan on continuing to review D&D modules in more or less alphabetical order of their mod codes. Till next time, this is RPG Mods Fan saying cheers, have a good day, and goodbye. You just have to try harder than you fight. You might be lost like sunshine in the night. You know what they say, life's about to to try harder than you thought